Coast of Football. Another very pleasant duty for us to review the films of a winning football game and look ahead to our opponent this coming week. This past week, of course, the Huskers were big winners over Colorado, 59 to nothing. And a very happy guy is our guest commentator, assistant coach John Melton, who's the linebacker coach. And you defensive guys, you always look at the right side of the score, and it was right for you, wasn't it? Well, uh, I thought the defense played real well. Uh, when You know, looking at films in Colorado, they're, they're a good offensive football team. But I think that we just controlled them a little bit. And, of course, when the offense gets the ball and scores a lot, that it has to take them out of their game plan at that time. It did, and you got the jump on them early, John, a lot of points early. Yeah, and, and that really helps because you, you play a little more relaxed when you're battling. You know, I haven't read the paper yet, but is this the same Tom Osborne that coached this club against Colorado, coached the other game? I, I think it is. I think it is, John. Well, I just wondered because, you know, sometimes everything goes good, and then, you know, it's, right. it's the team, and when everything goes bad, it's Tom Osborne. So... Uh, I think Tom deserves a lot of credit for this ball game because he he really had Colorado off balance. I don't think they knew uh, what was coming up next. You know, he he screened them, he, he threw mm -hmm. the ball good and run options well, and I I just thought he called a great game. One of the questions, John, that people will ask: they see all this fireworks and everything go right, and they say, "Hey, how come it all goes right in one game and not in another?" Well. You know, if everything went right all the time, it'd be a very dull game uh, because uh, if the defense is right, then the offense is no good, see? Mm -hmm. But uh, that's college football. Uh, you're playing with uh, young men, and they're not pros. In other words, even in pro ball, how can San Francisco just kill Dallas? Mm -hmm. See, it, it's the same old story. You have to be ready to play well every week. Well, the Huskers certainly were. And a couple of guys who were very instrumental in blanking Colorado this past week are our guests here tonight. Uh, Sammy Sims on the left and Dave Stromath on the right. Let's talk to Sammy here. Sammy, the senior from Lubbock, Texas, number six, Husker Monster. And Sammy, uh, it must have given you a good feeling to, to blank Colorado. You guys kind of tough on them over the years. Well, yeah, uh, I enjoyed the zero score, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, always, it's always nice to get a shutout, and uh, our guys played real tough, and we did some... Uh, a lot of different things. We showed them a lot of different things, so mm -hmm. they couldn't pick it up right away. So I think we did a great job. And down late in the game, of course, the reserves uh, took over, and uh, you guys were kind of cheering them on. To... Oh, yeah. You know, it's always nice to, uh, like I said, win with a zero score plus to get those uh, second and third team guys in there so they can get some experience. Good. Well, you've been staying pretty healthy, Sammy. A guy next to you there is a guy who's been kind of fighting a bruised shoulder most of the year here, Dave Stromath, the senior from... Millard, Nebraska. Uh, Dave, uh, how far can you get your arm up there? Oh, I can move it. I've got complete mobility. It's just there's a little bit of pain there. There's a little bit of pain. Nothing that's, I can't play with. <laughs> that's what the coaches love to hear. You got to play with pain, don't you, John? Well, I'll tell you, this guy here, he's, uh, it hurts him a little more than he'll let you uh, believe. And uh, really, I think uh, maybe after the season, Dave, they're going to repair it for you, aren't they? Probably do a little something. Maybe tighten it up. With surgery. <laughs> Dave uh, wears number 99 out there, Dave Stromath, and has uh, last this past week, of course, got to see a lot of action because uh, they withheld uh, Toby Williams. Well, yes, I, I played a little bit on both sides, mm -hmm. but against Colorado, I just played against the right side, and uh, Tom Gadowski played right left. Side, right. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. The uh, this tackle situation is one that I know we kind of got off to a, a little bit of a rough start, and and. Folks were maybe thinking that's going to be the Achilles heel to Nebraska uh, with Toby with the ankle and then, uh, or uh, Tony, uh, Henry, Toby with the uh, liver problem and yourself, but things now are coming around a little better? I think we've all pulled together well, the, all of us. I guess there's been about four that's played quite a bit, mm -hmm. as four different starters, and uh, I think we've pulled together well, even though we are kind of wounded. Whenever I get a big lineman on the show, why fans always say, tell how much they weigh. How big are they? Your, your official stats, Dave? I'm six foot four, about 245 pounds. 245. Which is pretty small for a defensive tackle, mm -hmm. really. Uh, but uh, he makes up with, with mobility and strength, and uh, he knows what's going on. He's a, he and Sammy are good, smart, smart ball players. They've been in the trenches before, and they know what's expected of them. Right. They're both fifth-year seniors who've been around and uh, certainly want to see the Huskers come back and win this conference championship and a good start this past week. Let's take a look at the, the polls. We always like to get Coach Melton's comments about those. The Huskers this week re-entered the 
AP, well, first here's the UPI poll, and the Huskers were just under the uh, the charts here. They moved up to number 14, so the coaches have a pretty good I idea of the Husker strength. While over on the AP chart, Nebraska came back in after an absence at uh, number 19. Uh, I guess the biggest surprise in there, along with everybody getting knocked off along the way, John, would have to be Missouri, number eight this, this week. Yeah, well, Missouri is undefeated, and, you know, they played a good schedule, and uh, it's going to be a little tougher for them, uh, you know, now on, because right. uh, they've, uh, they've got to get in the big eight and see how it goes. And this is probably their biggest test, of course. Uh, uh, it'll be against a team that's expected to contest, of course, for a top spot in the big eight as we take a look at the... Uh, big eight results. I guess we'll look at the schedules here in a moment. The uh, big eight results from this past week uh, San Diego State and Iowa State. Now that's Missouri's opponent this coming week, Iowa State, and kind of shocked everybody. San Diego uh, threw a passer at him they just couldn't contain, beat him 51 to 31. And another black eye for the big eight, Texas, uh, came back strong in the second half and just manhandled Oklahoma to win that one rather convincingly. Elsewhere, Oklahoma State. Came on strong. They shut down Kansas pretty good. Don Fambro down there just couldn't believe his team couldn't move it. 20 to 7. And Missouri was that big winner over Kansas State, 58-13. And of course, the Huskers take on Kansas State this week and Missouri the week after. So the uh, time's running out, John. Things have. Uh... Yeah, well, it's it's down to uh, where you know it's it's getting real serious now. Uh, <laughs> the exhibition season's over right. and. Uh, was that Florida State above us in that poll there? John, they are. They are four and one, so they, they're they they're, they're four and one. Four and one. They yeah. lost one game. That's right. Oh, to Nebraska. I see. But uh, fellas like you don't make out that poll. No, uh, I tell you, I wish, you know, it's the coaches. They know who they want to play and who they don't want to play. But the sports writers, of course, you know, they, they don't realize that. And uh, there's a lot of those coaches wouldn't really rush right out and schedule Nebraska if That's they had right. their choice. That's right. Well, John, we've got a lot of film here, a lot of things to talk about, a lot of fireworks, so we better move right along. The uh, ball game was one uh, that uh, saw uh, the uh, weather finally cooperate. It was delightful indeed. And uh, here's the, there was a little mix-up on the choices of things here. Well, when it finally got decided why... Colorado wearing their new Columbine blue uniforms uh, was going to take the football and the Huskers are going to kick off. On the first play here, uh, Don, you'll notice somebody slips. And okay. we're not going to mention any names, but he's sitting over here on my right wearing number six. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sammy's been wearing the same shoes, I think, ever since he came here. Oh. <laughs> kind of lost my friend that did that. <laughs> It's a good thing we can't run that back, Sammy. I tell you, they're, uh, Colorado is a pretty good offensive football team. Uh, you know, they moved that ball against everybody. It's a good play. The guy overthrew yep. a little bit, and Krejci Krejci jumps off. in, intercepts, so the Huskers start right off in great shape, 37-yard line. Mike Rozier getting his first start here at the I-back spot. Phil Bates ahead of him, and Turner Gill, his first start as the quarterback. And... By both the way, it's, of, both of them did yep. a good job. Gill and Rozier combined on the first play, and Mike gets inside the 30 for good yardage. You did this a lot. Got a lot of good yardage on first yeah, down. Yeah, which really helps because then you can, you know, mess around a little bit and try some things. Mm. Rozier gets uh, Our play. offensive line and backs really, really did a good job in this ball game. I think we really dominated them. Turner on his keeper gets inside. Turner did real well executing this mm -hmm. ball game. He played like he was a little older than a sophomore, didn't he? He, just, he did. Of course, I don't know, you know, about his automatics and stuff like that. Coach Osborne knows, but mm. tough there's run. a good job of yeah. running. He, he's really tough. Mike hits up in the hole real hard. He's a tough runner, too. He's a tough man to tackle. Yes, he is. He is. He is. And, feet. and of course, you know, when Roger Craig comes in, they don't, they don't really drop off. <laughs> Seems like, like Mike has got a little combination of uh, red wine speed and Roger strength. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, mm -hmm. and that's pretty, pretty Glad tough. Glad I don't to have to play against these guys next spring. <laughs> <laughs> There's the fake keeper by uh, it's good Turner. Read. It's a good read. Yep. It's a good decision. Irving Fryer there. Irving the probably man. wished he pitched it, knowing that guy. <laughs> <laughs> they all like to carry the ball, which you know, that's good. That's it. It's now a good again, offensive line to carry there. behind. Yeah. They're kicking them out pretty good right now. Mike Rozier, you see, is the big workhorse in this series. Gets it down about the three-yard line. 
Now we'll see him go in, the ball come out, and then Mike gets given that ball. <laughs> that cost Mike 20 grass drills, that, even though he recovered it. That cost him 20.